All righty. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the West Coast Sports Junkies. We are recording tonight. Um, quite the lineup. We're going to jam it in for you listeners here this week. We got uh, NFL updates after week two, uh, some fantasy talk, big UFC coming up, UFC 266, uh, Ryder Cup. That's always good on the golf uh, tournament. And we'll end it with some NF or sorry NHL preseason. NFL is done, but we're already in the swing of uh, NHL preseason preseason starting. Uh, before we get in, Mike, let us know where have you been? How is your week hunting? And I hope you caught something. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Dan. Yeah, it feels like it's been a while since we've been recording. We obviously had some technical difficulties there last week, a couple of weeks ago, but. Uh, yeah, I have been uh, out in the Rocky Mountains of British Columbia. And man, I'm telling you guys, if you guys haven't been out that way, just the trip alone is worth it. Like the views and we basically set up camp off the grid in a valley, um, you know, in between two um, mountain, Mount, Rocky Mountain ranges. And, uh, man, just waking up and, and looking at those views is, is gorgeous. We were hunting, we were and fishing and we were hunting for elk. We didn't get any elk. We were, uh, we actually didn't see any elk finally to the last two days, but you know, it was pretty cool to see those animals are really elusive. Um, but, uh, we did get a couple of deer Govic got us, got his first buck. So congratulations to him. He's obviously can't be here today. He's working remotely again. Um, but, uh, tonight boys, I got my new West coast sports junkies beer mug and I got uh, Molson Canadian going down in it. Ty, where have you been up to? What do you, what have you been up to my man? What's up guys. It's been a while. Uh, good to be back on air with you. I have uh, a bunch of things I want to rant about today, especially the Seahawks, uh, <laughs> week two game there on Sunday, but, uh, but no, it's great to be back with you guys. I was actually away last week. Uh, went on my first kind of out of town, out of province trip since uh, the pandemic started. Went to Toronto, which was uh, a ton of fun. Haven't been there since I was a kid. Hit some good rooftop patios and uh, some good dinners, did some exploring. And the best part for me was uh, checking out a Blue Jays game. And, you know, they're in the thick of the wild card hunt. So, the game was awesome. Uh, it was a beautiful day. The roof was open. Um, they won that game, actually. And Mike, just so you know, I got uh, a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. jersey, and oh, he has been late. Fuck. He's been lighting it up. Poor guy, man. Since I got the, he was already lighting it up, but he has continued his uh, his dominance. I'm sending him a tweet right now, apologizing for what my friend Tyler has done. <laughs> Not only did I get one, though, my wife got one, a matching jersey. Oh, my God, it's a double whammy. And then we also got Stella, my French bulldog, a jersey. So, so you know, we're set. But the anyways. Only, the only player I can, I can think of that you guys both have their jersey is, is Earl Thomas. Look what happened to that guy. We both have a Russell jersey, too. But anyways, well, you know, back to the Blue Jays. They're in the thick of the wild card hunt. Um, right now, as – as it stands, the the Yankees and, and uh, Red Sox are still playing tonight. But I think the the Jays are in one of those last wildcard spots. They got a half game lead. But uh, it's going to be a tight race. I think there's 15 or so games left. But uh, it's a lot of fun to be talking about Blue Jay baseball. And, and I'm on the bandwagon, hoping they can sneak into the playoffs. You guys been uh, watching any Blue Jays? Yeah, man, I've been watching all the games. It's uh, it's been a good time, especially that they're they're almost. Well, they're, I think they're going to make the playoffs this year, which is it's going to be wild. And uh, I saw some of your videos and your clips from where you guys were at. Guys, yeah, looked looked a lot of like a lot of fun, man. Yeah, you know what I figured out about baseball, like Mike, we've been to a few games here and there. We've been to a couple of Mariners games and this and that, but we usually don't get great seats, and we tend to just hang around in the beer gardens and uh, catch a little bit of the game here and there, but. Uh, actually got some better seats we we're about four rows up from uh from the field in the infield and what a difference man that's the way to watch a baseball game you got foul balls popping over the net like it's it's a lot more action down there and you actually want to watch the game i don't know maybe it was just just me there because i haven't been to a sporting event 
in a while other than the white cap game a few weeks ago, but uh, it was a lot of fun, man. I think the key to baseball is good seats. Yeah. I haven't had really good seats. I've always been in the outfield, right? <laughs> where it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, we just, we just drink a lot of beers and hope that a ball comes near us, but uh, did any ball, any foul balls come near you? Oh man, they were close, but we were like in our area, but we were actually too close to get the, you know, the, the pop flies over the, the fouled off balls. So we were like probably maybe six, seven rows away from where all the action was. So I, I got it scoped out for our next baseball game. So I'll get us right in the, uh, the areas where there's tons of action. Sweet. Yeah. Well, I'm what? heading to uh, Toronto in a couple of weeks. I'm going uh, October 17th to the, sorry, October 7th to the 17th. So Ty, I hope you haven't cursed the Blue Jays uh, with your presence in your New Jersey and they make the playoffs. Because hopefully well, if they're still be... in it then, man. They're going to be deep into the yeah. playoffs. Like, and so I'll, October I'll be 17. going to a game, hopefully. Um, when I'm well, there. hopefully you speaking now, saying you want to go to a game, <laughs> didn't just ruin their plans of making the playoffs. <laughs> because... Oh, my God. They're screwed. They're screwed. <laughs> Ty and they have the Black Cloud. We've got a lot of apology letters and uh, tweets to start sending out. But yeah, before we get into the rest of the, the lineup for tonight, uh, I'm drinking the usual. We haven't uh, had a chance to make it to a lot of local craft breweries, so I got my go-to beer tonight again, the Stella Artois. And uh, Dan, what are you drinking? Um, I'm drinking a little bit of leftover beer from uh, the last time we recorded, uh, Naked Fox IPA um, from Main Street Brewing, local here in uh, Vancouver. Nice. How is it, man? That was good. Yeah. I'm definitely looking uh, forward to some of those fruity beers that Govic might be bringing from his trips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing about him uh, traveling. Hopefully, he'll uh, bring us a, a new lineup for the next few weeks of the show. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's been a while. We got to get everybody back on uh, on set here. 100%. So... I'm going to lead straight into uh, Mike. I know you're wearing your, you're still wearing your Jersey from uh, the weekend. So I'm glad you're, you're still a fan. You know, you got the first week, you're all excited about being a fan again. So the question is, are you still a fan after the Seahawks blew that lead at home with the twelves back? Tell me how you feel. Well, without a question, I'm still a fan. <laughs> That's why I don't know why that would be the question. What you a asked silly me, huh? question there, Dad. Yeah, you know, that's loyal. No matter what happens. Hold on, Mike. Hold on. Last, last week, week you hold said on. you're 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 back being a fan. So I'm just you know us you're, loyal you're fans, quote, man. Dan of teams <laughs> stick with our team when something shitty happens. We may have a problem with it. We may have a you know something to do with say about the coaches, some players, and that. But you know, we stick. With, it's a thing called loyalty in sports. We stick to our team, the Seahawks. I know. We question you on that sometimes uh, with your choices, but no, I'm just kidding. Mike, what did, what did you think about the game well, on Sunday? Well, first of all, we didn't talk about week one. Week one, they came out guns blazing, and I thought they looked fantastic. I almost bought tickets to the Super Bowl after watching that game. Like I thought, <laughs> holy crap, here we go. <laughs> Russell Wilson's going to be MVP, no no problem, no matter what this 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 year. Uh, you know, Tyler Locker was good. The defense was good. Everything was working. And then, uh, yeah, we saw the game week two. Um, we're at home, the home opener. I mean, we came out again. Uh, great guns blazing. Like the offense was just clicking. Um, we're up 30 to six or 16 tie at the half. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was actually 24, nine at the half. I know you okay. didn't get to see it all. Like, um, yeah, but... I had to leave to go to my brother's, uh, kid's birthday. Yeah, I thought it was could be the nine. reason why. It was 24 9 at half, I believe, but it was 30 to 16, the start of the fourth quarter. At home, Jesus. we have a two touchdown lead. Inexcusable loss, man. Um, I was fired up after this one. I think we've seen a lot of we've seen a lot of Seahawk losses um regular season wise. I think that's that has to be near the top. I mean, it was two years since your fans are in Lumen Field place was rocking you have a two touchdown lead at home and i think pete was just plain and simple out coached in that fourth quarter especially the second half the game plan changed um they kind of went away from running the ball our defense was out there a lot because of that quick strike drives you know any we could stop their run yeah regardless of of how good your defense is if your offense is even scoring quickly 
or obviously not sustaining drives and your defense is out there all game, especially against a power running team and a power back like Derrick Henry. I mean, it's bound to happen, but I just think he was out coached. I hate the conservativeness when we have that lead in the fourth quarter, we see it every, every game. And we're just, we kind of are used to it. And we usually pull out these games. So we don't get as upset about it. You know, we usually, you know, that's a game we would win at home, especially if we were there we'd all be fired up. It's a win, but that loss I think is on Pete Carroll and his philosophy, his conservative play where it was run the ball on first and second down. And then you have a third and long where Russ has to convert and make something happen. And it just didn't get the job done. And I'm just sick of the fucking Pete Carroll ugh, blowing game. What are you saying here? You want to get rid of Pete Carroll? Man, I, I honestly think so. Like, I, I love Pete Carroll. I love everything he's done for us. And I know it's one game. But well, come we, on, we, man. We've get said your it time. Out of your ass, time. Mike, how many times have we said it time and time again about his play calling? And look, his philosophy, not necessarily his play calling. We have a new offensive coordinator. We do, Could but have everything, been him. Runs, we don't know. everything runs through Pete. They have a game plan and that game plan. They Let's had do, the, the lead does stop there, but I, I look at the game and I want to try to take away some positives, right? So the good thing is that this game happened in week two of the season. So we can freaking work, you know, build upon this, get back to the basics, get back to the team that was out there week one and the first half of last week. You know what I mean? Yeah, I will agree with that, but I, you don't I want this happening it. two weeks before the playoffs, but this shit happens, play. man. Okay. Like we, I cannot complain. We can't complain as Seahawks fans. We have not missed the playoffs in how many years with Russ and, and Pete, right? We're super consistent. We won a Super Bowl, which we are at. So, we, you know, Pete will always uh, have peace of my heart for that. But in terms of just winning enough games, we get in the playoffs or we get a wild card spot. And then it's like a week one loss in the playoffs. Like when's the, or we get to the second round after wild card weekend. When's the last time we were in the NFC championship? It would have been the year we went to the Super Bowl. Exactly. But think of how long ago <laughs> that was, right? Like, I appreciate the consistency and, you know, it's tough to win in the NFL. And there's a lot of other fans of teams who are in a worse spot than us. Like, they, when's the last time they've been to the playoffs? Like, imagine poor Rob, a Raiders fan. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But, but, but players or teams like that and fans that have to deal with that. But, I mean, we need someone that's going to get us to the next level. Like, I'm tired of the, the decent, consistent, regular seasons, get into the playoffs, and then lose. We need someone who has that. I don't know. A different mentality, I think. It's just well, that's just my like two I said, cents, from, from week one and half the half of week two, <laughs> I felt like we were a Super Bowl contending team. Okay. Well, we saw the last half of week two. Uh, we obviously were not. Um, we need to get back. We'll see what we'll see what, what uh, Pete Carroll can do. His job now is to regroup this team, get them back to True. the team that they was on the field week one. And at the start of week two. And I, I'm not uh, putting it all on Pete. It's just, it's like, I've seen this uh, same song and dance too many weeks, man, where it's, we have a lead, we get conservative and, you know, just put your, put your, uh, just finish it off, man. Like, I know what you no, mean. And, and he probably felt too, we're, we're at home now. We got the 12. Two to, touchdown to lead. Yeah, we can yeah. milk the clock. But like when you're, when your game plan changes like that and your D has been out there a lot, like I was saying against a power back, a power running team, like look what Derek Henry did to us. And a lot of people's fantasy teams, man. It was, it was, uh, it was painful to watch. Actually, I was playing Derrick Henry in my fantasy team. <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> and the first half, I was like, "Yeah, Russell Wilson's lighting it up. Uh, Lockett's lighting oh, it up." Oh, that is right. You did play oh. Derrick Henry too. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. But well, on, I on mean, top... if you look, if you look at yeah. uh, Rogers, Aaron Rogers, you know, collapse. Actually, I wouldn't even call it a collapse. It wasn't even a start in the first week and you know they came back and uh took care of business in week two i think you know it, it, like, you know it, like mike said it's early even though it's the same song and dance you've seen it before with you want uh, these problems to happen in the first five weeks of the season you don't want them to, to come about in week 12 that is true but, but the 15, one scary the one in scary this division thing, you cannot afford exactly, to lose exactly kind of that's what i was just gonna say uh this division like it's not previous years where you know this Arizona's division has crap, Rams This division crap, has been one of just, the it's just Seahawks' best division for a while. leagues. Uh, it is gonna be probably one of the toughest divisions in the league. Um 
and, and now there's an extra spot for the wild card. Have you, have you looked at the wild card right now? Tampa, no. who's two and O, is in the wild card. Yeah, Correct? no, it's way it's way too no, early for no, me. To obviously, it's way too early to but see yeah. that, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. predict that. But I'm just saying, it's like in terms there's the going to be a team the that probably has like an 11 and six record, not made the playoffs. Yeah, in the NFC. But going to back to Rogers, what do you guys think? Everyone was dogging him after week one that he should retire. The drama with Green Bay, go play, you know, host Jeopardy. And um, I know he cost me my fantasy week. Ty, I know you had him in another pool. He yeah, was, against you. Uh, oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, it it was was oh, yeah. You. Oh, you forgot. Huh? <laughs> he got me one fucking point in week I one. I squeaked out and a I lost one, by in two. One pool, in one pool, I squeaked out a win. I had... Devonte Adams and Aaron Rodgers they combined for like seven points and then against Ty in a different league he had Rodgers and Rodgers is dead to me I don't care what he did (laughs) uh on Monday night like he had to do that and we can't take a lot from that in my opinion either like it's the Detroit Lions are still the Detroit Lions Aaron Rodgers was at home uh he did look like his old self but you know what this week against San Francisco will be a true test in my opinion to see if everyone can relax and uh, if Aaron Rodgers and the Packers will be okay this year. Yeah. uh, Well, yeah, we'll definitely see it for sure. I mean, the NFC this year, there's no, like, I don't actually look at Casey. They blew a lead to Baltimore. There's no guarantee teams. um, You think, you know, every year it's going to be, you know, Casey out of the AFC, a toss up between Green Bay, Tampa. I mean, the Saints are probably not even in a, they're going to be in like draft pick territory. Um, but yeah, no, at the entire league, it's, you know, it's every week is going to be ups and downs. I mean, look how many injuries there were this week. Four quarterbacks went down to injuries uh, this week. Yeah, your old uh, buddy Cam Newton might be getting a call soon. <laughs> I bet you he would have if he was vaccinated. That's probably the one thing holding them back. But uh, why don't we jump ahead a little bit and talk about uh, week three. Do you guys want to give any uh, guaranteed picks? Give our junkies lock of the week. We can do either straight up or we can do spread just to win. You know, might be might be good just to pick winners as a lot of people are in survivor pools and hopefully we can help them out with that. Um, Okay. well, I'll go first. You don't mind. Go ahead, My Mike. pick of this week is going to be the Seattle Seahawks are going to bounce back after that shitty performance, get the W, get it done in Minnesota versus the Vikings. That's my guaranteed pick of the week. Boom. I like it. Uh, they better because, you know, Pete has uh, some work to do to get back on my good books. Dan, what do you got for this week? Uh, we're just taking one team. Yeah, let's do like a, okay. A, okay. I'll do. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take. I mean, if you really want to talk a lock of the week, I think literally every week whoever is playing Jacksonville is a lock. So <laughs> I'll go with Arizona, uh, who is playing Jacksonville as my mm-hmm. lock. That's a that's a good pick. I hope you're wrong for our division's <laughs> sake. Would love Jacksonville to pull an upset, but I don't see that happening either. So that's a it's a solid pick. Um. For me, I would say Baltimore on the road against the Detroit mm-hmm. Lions. Um, the Lions are, they'll be desperate for a win, but they have Jared Goof as their quarterback, <laughs> who we know well from the NFC West the last few years. And they're coming off the big win against KC. There could be a little chance for a letdown, but I don't see it happening. I see uh, Baltimore blowing out Detroit. And I, I think all three of us will uh, survive to the next week with those picks. Yeah, there you go. No one, there's some big favorites out there too. No one takes the Jets. I mean, sorry, the the Broncos playing the Jets. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be a really big Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan this week as they play the Rams. That should be a good game. That could be game of the week right there. I really yeah. want to see how uh, Dan's boy Brady there and yeah. their, their O-line holds up against that uh, Rams defensive front. Hopefully Aaron hey. Donald can uh, get in his kitchen a little bit there. How old is Brady now? 42? 44. 57? 44. He's looking good, man. He's still five, throwing those darts. Wait, he threw five touchdowns last week? Yeah. Crazy. Leading the league right now in touchdowns. How about <laughs> yeah. Gronk? You want to talk about comebacks? Ooh. Yeah, no kidding. I, well, I, yeah, I saw look, Gronk look after week one. 
after week one, I'm like, no one must have, no one drafted Gronk. Like he's old, wants to retire. So I go on the the wire to pick, to pick him up. You drafted him? I drafted him. Hell, man, hundred percent. Jeez. Still early. Let's see how he holds up. Uh, but you know what? He did take that year off. So, yeah, that definitely helped his cause there for his uh, his NFL comeback. But yeah, it's gonna be uh, gonna be good. Dan might get into a little bit of uh, some fantasy talk in the dirty talk later on. Alrighty, so we are back. Uh, this is I'm, I just gotta say this is probably the most exciting time of the year. NFL's back. We're into the playoffs of uh, baseball, and NHL preseason is right around the corner. You know, uh, Canucks. What's happening, Ty? You know, Pedersen, Hughes still not signing. I, you know, everyone's heard about my bet. Govic is not here to flap, so I'm. You know, secretly just counting down till the game one and Pedersen is not signed and then Govic is going to drink and pay up. But what do you got, Ty? What do you think is happening? Uh, thank you, Jim, Mike, right? What's happening? That's are they right, going to sign him? Two, your two biggest rookies are unsigned right now. It's working out perfectly but... for me because it's uh, <laughs> it's giving uh, Govic's sphincter muscle good, good some good exercise. And that's probably why he's not here. He's, he's working because he's scared you have to pay you, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I'm a little worried. I didn't think it would go on this long. But, you know, the Canucks have uh, kind of put themselves in this position by going out and spending all that money in free agency. They left themselves with about $15 million to sign their two cornerstone franchise players to either bridge deals or long-term deals. It, it sounds like when it does get done, it's going to be a bridge deal, which like three or four years uh, because they don't have the, the money in the bank there under the salary cap to commit to a long-term deal where they could pay them a little more. But man, I don't know. I'm getting worried. Um, you would think the process would be sped up a little bit now because uh, there's a couple, couple guys that just got signed that, that a lot of people put in the same sort of category as Hughes and Pedersen. So Minnesota just signed uh, Kaprasov, the reigning rookie of the year. He did only play one year, but he's older. Uh, he's about the same age, I believe, as Pedersen. And he's kind of in that same point total-ish. Um, obviously, Pedersen's played a few more seasons, but he is coming off an injury, which uh, we've talked about on this podcast. So yeah, uh, Kaprasov signed for $9 million average. Uh, I believe it was a six-year deal. Now that's pretty steep. Um, so, you know, Pedersen's camp is seeing that and they're thinking, okay, well, pretty much the things I just said, they could use in an argument, right? Like Kaprasov for the Canucks are probably saying Kaprasov only played one year, but they're, they're similar players put up similar points. So that $9 million uh, average price tag is a little scary because if they did sign him to that, that would obviously leave uh, six mil. And it's kind of funny the way it is because another comparable for Hughes is Rasmus Dallin from the Buffalo Sabres, similar player to Hughes, uh, puck moving defenseman. He's offensive minded. His defensive play isn't great. He just signed a, I think it's a bridge deal, which I talked about a three minute, three year deal for 6 million, uh, average. So, you know, nine plus six, Dan, you're the banker that puts uh, the little 15 mil. Yeah. And um, you know, that would, there's no wiggle room for uh, there's any... no wiggle room there. So right now the Canucks guaranteed trade are... deadline. Yep. Jim Benning was actually interviewed uh, recently and he, he talked a little bit about it saying he, you know, the both sides are, they're still talking and they're close. It's going to take time, but I mean, training camp starting this week and your two stars are in Michigan um, wakeboarding together, <laughs> not with the team not under contract or under new contract. So I don't know, Mike, what do you if think? You get, if this you is going to get done. I think it's going to get done. It has to get done. I mean, this is the team right there. That's the backbone of the, you got the, that's why I can't believe it's still not done forward. yet. It has to get done. It's going to get done. And like, I think like Benning said, yeah, they're going to want to get the best deal. They absolutely can. They're going to use as much time as possible to get that deal done. I mean, yeah, we know training camps around the corner. They might have to sit out a, a game or two in preseason, but a deal is going to get done here. Uh, I'm, if it doesn't get done, I don't know I will, I will, if it doesn't get done, I'll buy you guys 
all, but he was one. <laughs> I'll buy the beers for the. I'll buy I the thought, beers the rest of the year. If I really want that matter. plane and banner to go up around uh, the arena. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to fly it. That's the deal. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Yeah. It's going to get done. It has to get done. I mean, like, think about it. If you could pick, well, if you could pick one of the two, if you had to get rid of one, which one would you keep? Oh, man. That is a, that is a, I think for me personally, tough I question. would keep Hughes. Tough question. I, te- I keep Hughes too, just because. Because you got a whole I mean, guy. Def- those uh, defensemen of that caliber are very hard to come oh, by. Yeah, sure. but he he's a his defensive play has not been great. That's he true. But then of... again, you have the a rookie a Calder Calder trophy Calder trophy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Winning uh, you know, guy who won the Calder trophy. I mean, that's a tough one. Did you guys uh see the interview with Luke's brother or not Luke's brother, Quinn's brother, uh Jack Hughes? They oh. were interviewing him about uh, you know. If he talked to his brother, this wasn't from Canuck media. This was like New Jersey media with their opening training camp uh, interviews or whatever. So someone asked him about it and he went on to say, you know, like, Oh, well, it's not uh, Quinn's fault that he plays for one of the worst teams in the league. And that's why his numbers aren't where they should be. That's why his, you know, the plus minus and all those categories, which shows his defensive play hasn't been great, but fucking his brother, Jack Hughes is calling out the Canucks. Uh, <laughs> Has he not looked at the standings? Because the Devils had a higher draft pick than us. Like they were a far, well, I wouldn't say far worse, but they were worse in the standings, man. So that was uh, it was pretty funny. It had uh, Canuck Twitter up in arms about that. Um, <laughs> added a little fuel to the fire about the contract situation too. Yeah, I, I didn't hear that, but that's uh, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> ridiculous thing to say. Right, <laughs> but I mean, again, he, Hughes is our number one guy, and uh, he's going to be out there a lot. So, yeah, you know, I think give give it time, even with him, he needs a bit of time for sure. But, but we'll, we'll uh, we'll it's yeah, we'll get there. But like I said, training camp starting this week, man. I'm getting a little worried. Um, Fuck, man. I think you it'll wanna, get done. You too. just want to fire everybody. Hey, fire Jim. Fire, fire uh, Pete <laughs> Carroll. <Fire> Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, this is why we started the podcast, Mike. We need to get some of these feelings out in the universe because uh, a lot of people <laughs> will agree with us. But uh, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully next week we will have a new update for everybody here that will be, you know, announcing or re-announcing the Canucks have uh, signed Hughes and Pedersen. Yeah. Time will tell, I guess. The Seahawks are back on track and everything. Everyone's happy now. <laughs> everything's right in the world again, right? <laughs> yeah. They slayed the dragon! It's a wonderful day for an exorcism. Mario Mandzukic pounced and England are hot! It is time. Big UFC coming up this weekend in Vegas, UFC 266. Mike, I know you've had about a month to research because we haven't had a, it doesn't seem like we haven't had a UFC in quite a long time. <laughs> Um, I think it was like beginning of August was the last UFC. Yeah. So, uh, what do you got, Mike? There's, I know your buddy Diaz is coming out of retirement after, uh, who knows how long to fight Robbie Lawler and, uh, a couple of title fights, Shevchenko. Let's hear it. Who's your well, picks? That's it, man. This is UFC 266. And this is the reason why I came home early from my vacation is just to watch these damn fights, man. Been pumped up for it for a long time. Uh, we'll we'll go down the we'll go to the main card. So it's going to start off with uh, Jessica Andrade or Andrade uh, versus Cynthia Calvillo. Calvillo. And uh, we got Andrade, who is a uh, she's 20, 21 and nine. Calvillo is, is nine and two. Calvillo is older. She's about uh, thirty four years old. She's a striker. We have on. I'm gonna call her Andrade. Uh, comes in at a favorite of minus 250 and Cynthia is a plus 200. Um, I, I've never seen, a, I think this fight is 
clearly the UFC wants to see Cynthia win this fight. So there can be another name they can add to the list that can challenge uh, Shevchenko for the title because every she's knocked, she's gone through everyone. Anyone who gets to the top 10 is basically, you know, going to become a contender for Shevchenko. And, uh, you know, Andre had already had her chance and the last time around. Obviously, didn't work well for her. But in this fight, I don't see uh, Cynthia. I don't think she's got a chance. I mean, obviously, it's a fight, so you got a chance. But Andre's just, uh, you know, she's got good head movement. She's a good striker. She's a great wrestler. I think she's going to beat her on all facets of the game. I think she's going to finish her within the time frame as well. What do you think, Ty? Yeah, no, I... Uh... I actually agree with you there. Um, I I don't think she'll win within the time frame. I think it'll be a, another decision win. Uh, I don't see Calvillo beating her uh, by any means, but uh, I mean, who's left for Chevchenko to fight in this division, man? At this well, point. the UFC is hoping that, that Cynthia pulls up the upset here I know, and wins it, but, and then there's someone else. But there, I right? mean, there's there's. I can't think there's not really anyone. She beats everyone. Like you said, that uh, gets thrown at her or thrown her way. Exactly. And as for betting purposes, I'm not going to bet this one straight up, but I will throw probably, you know, Andras or Andre, whatever you want to call her, uh, you know, on a parlay at that minus, you know, a minus two fifty. That's that. I'm going to do. Totally agree. I, I feel like this is going to be uh, one of those favorite parlay type of UFC cards for me. Um, but you can uh, yeah, bring us into the next, uh, the next fight on the main card there. Yeah, the next fight, we got the big boys, the heavyweights going out of Curtis Blades is a minus 300 versus, uh, I'm going to really butcher this one, Jarizino Rosenstrike. How's that? We'll call him Rosenstrike. You know okay? that, that was pretty good, Mike. <laughs> okay, uh, Rosenstrike is a plus 250 dog going into this fight. Now, this fight is basically uh, you know, the classic wrestler versus striker. Rosenstrike, all he has is his striking. He's a big dude. If he, if he hits them, it can be lights out. Um, I wouldn't put Curtis Blades at a minus 300. He's a smaller guy. He's, you know, he's a, he's a, I think he's an NCAA um, wrestling champion. Um, I think that his wrestling will be the difference in this fight. I usually, I usually end up going with wrestlers because they can sort of play that game. If they get a hold of them and, and, you know, jump on top of them, whatever. I, or if I they think get that tired, he, will, he can turn yeah. to his wrestling. and. <laughs> I think he will finish this fight. But um, I don't know if I give him a minus 300. I don't think I'm going to give him like a 70% chance of winning this fight. You know what I mean? Like if he can get caught going in for a shoot, yeah, you never know what's going to happen, right? And he's got to hit once one of those heavy, heavy, heavy gloves there. So I'm going to take blades in this fight, but uh, you never know. It could go, go either way. I'll yeah, this is, a, this is a fight I may also, like I was saying, a favorite parlay for this UFC card. I might throw this on a parlay as well. I mean, you're not getting any value betting blades unless you maybe go for a a finish within the the three rounds. But uh, yeah, his he hasn't fought. uh, Well, he fought earlier this year and it was actually a loss blades to Derek Lewis, who we just saw. Was that the last pay-per-view we saw that he headlined? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hmm. We saw Derek Lewis did not look very impressive. Obviously, he's got the heavy hands and he can catch you. it's not a fight I'm really looking forward to at all, to be honest with you. And it's something that I would just like blades to, you know, get a win and keep my parlay going to the next, onto the next one. You know what I mean? Yeah. So on to the next one, we have the main event of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, it's my main event of the evening. We got Nick Diaz coming out of retirement. After Nick out of shape Diaz. Coming out of retirement to fight <laughs> Robbie Lawler to run this one back. This is the second time they're going to fight. First time they fought was 17 years ago. Nick That's Diaz nuts. was a big dog, big underdog going into that fight. Ended up knocking Robbie Lawler out. Um, Nick Diaz hasn't fought in six years. Six, he hasn't fought in six years. And then, That's crazy. then his last fight was Anderson Silva. And before that, he didn't fight for two years because he was suspended. So it's pretty much like eight years the guy hasn't been yeah. in, in the ring. Um, but we know that he's training. We know that he's he stays in, in great shape. Um, <laughs> but this well, fight, I mean, this, uh, round, this is, round is a shape, Mike. So, because I heard, I don't think uh, he's round. I heard, yes, yeah, he's not round, uh, but uh, he asked Dana White to have the weight uh bumped up to middleweight, and Lawler accepted. <laughs> well, they both, they both <laughs> are kind of like you know, in that uh, 
<laughs> sort of time time frame that they, I think why, that why benefits they like crazy. I think that benefits Lawler though in terms of uh, I think he's a bigger guy. Yeah. Lawler is a bigger. That's guy what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, this fight, I mean, it's all about what you know. It, it, so the odds are basically a coin flip. You got Robbie Lawler; he's a he's a slight favorite at minus one twenty five, and Nick Diaz coming in at a minus one oh one ten. So I mean, it's not. Uh, it's a coin that everyone wants to see. It started off, I think, you Lawler was a minus two hundred, and then the money just started pouring in on on Nick, and yeah. uh, so the uh, lots of the Diaz the, army out there. Huh? That's where the money's going. Yeah, the um, everyone wants to see what's going to happen. What Nick Diaz is going to show up is going to be ring rust. Same thing with Lawler. Lawler's on a four strike, four fight losing streak um, yeah. since he was the champion. So they fought seventeen years ago. They both sort of went their their different paths. Lawler obviously after that fight, Lawler got cut from the UFC for about six years, fought his way, his back way back in to become the UFC champion, the welterweight division. And yeah. he's had some crazy battles inside the octagon, you know, Rory McDonald and and you know, some some big, big fights. And uh Nick Diaz went on to be he fought in the UFC for a little while and then he went on to Bellator, or no, sorry, Strike Force and yeah. um became the strike strike force champion there. Um yeah, I mean it's 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 a tough one. This one, I think the smart bet would be not to bet it, but uh, you know it's Nick Diaz army motherfuckers, and that's where my money's going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm probably gonna bet it. And uh, you actually just brought up a reason why I might bet on Robbie Lawler because we were actually at, in my opinion, well, that was the best live fight I've ever seen. It was the Robbie Lawler Rory McDonald fight. Uh, years ago i think what was that main event i believe it was mcgregor's first title win the interim title win was the main event that's yeah, how long ago it was but anyways was against, yeah uh Mendes. Mendes. Yeah. yeah but anyways uh for for that reason uh, i bet against lawler and and i lost and i was there the guy's tough i mean depending what side you want to look at it he's taken a lot more damage like you said he's lost his last four fights uh diaz has not been fighting so he's got that going for him his chin should be uh, in some pretty good shape. See if he can eat a few shots from Waller. But it's it's a fun fight. It's a it's th- this feels like a, a fight for the fans, you know. Something uh, both these guys are not relevant in the division, in my opinion. This is yeah, probably for sure. It's the people's people's main event for sure. Yeah, and people like the... and most of these fighters know the Diaz. You know, they've seen the Diaz blueprint between Nate, Nick and Nate, right? They sort of yeah. they taunt their opponent. They try Stopped to get inside their slap. head. Yeah, they want it. They want to turn into a brawl. Um, yeah. you know they're gonna they can go the distance you know so that's that's where i think that it might lean towards nick diaz's is, is favorite if it goes the distance but um and you you would probably give him the edge in cardio but uh yeah. i don't know we'll see if his heart's in it i mean like he said essentially eight years before, before this or, or since his last fight um so i'll be probably placing a, a fun bet on you know i don't know can you bet on just the fight ending within with the uh, no winner probably a bet for that sure. someone knocking someone out <laughs> sure there is yeah but i would I, I would probably go with lawler i'm gonna lean with lawler in this one uh i know we probably won't be watching the fights together you know it's a big rivalry there between lawler and diaz and the diaz army if you're not cheering for diaz uh it's a problem it's a but, big problem. uh <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh what do you think dan about that fight yeah i know i think it, like mike said it's it's a coin flip. No one really knows what shape Diaz is in. He hasn't shot, fought for a long time. Again, Lawler is probably going to be hungry if he wants to continue fighting and pushing in the division. He has to win. He's lost four already. So yeah, I if I'm going to bet, I would probably go with Lawler because he's been active. He's been, you know, training and fighting regularly versus Diaz. That who knows what he's been doing uh, on the beach somewhere. Diaz, he's been riding his bike probably. <laughs> he trains a lot. He's been te- te- teaching. Uh, he teaches, uh, yeah, Brazilian jiu jitsu. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been trains all the time, man. He's, he's definitely not going to be out of shape, but no, he's gonna be but it is shape. interesting that he did want it. Uh, you know, at a well, his last weight. fight. His last uh, fight was at middleweight. It was against Anderson Silva in middleweight. That's so true. I don't know. Yeah, that's a, that was a weird one. It's always supposed to be a welterweight and they switched it like this week to <laughs> cuz they couldn't make yeah, but they both yeah, couldn't yeah. make weight. Yeah. You're right though. Lawler was probably like works for me. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. He's like, "Why would I want to do go through that hell?" But yeah. 
Yeah. Well, why don't you why don't you get us into the co-main event of the evening? Co-main event championship fight, Valentina Shevchenko. That's Govic's love versus Lauren <laughs> Murphy. And like really, Shevchenko comes into this fight at a minus seventeen hundred, and Murphy <laughs> is a plus eight hundred. So Shevchenko's winning this fight. Can we just move on? Yeah. <laughs> No, but seriously, yeah, I though, yeah, I do not I see anything that Lauren Murphy has that can take out Shevchenko. She's a better striker. She's a better wrestler. I yeah. see Shevchenko taking this down early. I'll give two it rounds. two rounds. Two rounds and she's yeah. going to lose via crucifix to punches. Oh, wow. I like that uh, specific that's prediction there. That's her move, man. There's also a huge favorite. She's a huge favorite to finish the fight, obviously. So it's not even worth betting I think that. It's a minus 200 opinion. for her to finish the fight. I think Something it was like even that. more. But anyways, it, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, I was looking at him the other day. It was it's expected like, to happen, right? Yeah. Even Speaking if we're to go the, the distance, for it to go the distance, you get some decent odds. For it to go the distance, I think it's like a plus 600 or something like that. Yeah, which she's not lasting five rounds with Chevchenko. I think I, I think we all know that. But So speaking of uh, fans' fights uh, with Chevchenko, I think all the fans want to see her fight Amanda Nunes. And I think if she handles, like I think every, we all agree she's going to handle this fight and dominate. I think that should be the next fight that the UFC tries to, because both of them, Nunez and Shevchenko, are literally just wiping the floor of any opponent in both divisions to a super fight. Yeah, they've fought twice. Yeah, and, they have. But and, I mean, uh, they're both different fighters now. The thing is, Shevchenko is like twenty pounds lighter than uh, than uh, Nunez, Nunez, right? Yeah. And even her, I it's arguable that Shevchenko is the best female fighter of all time, better than. Uh, Better than Nunez. Nunez. Yeah. It's because of that, because the last fight was a close split decision win for Nunez. You could argue that Shevchenko won that fight and she came into that fight 20 pounds lighter than Nunez did, which is a lot of, you know, that's a lot of weight. Um, for sure. And the, the problem with that, like making that fight happen would be like the negotiations, like what, what weights are going to happen at? I mean, I guess you could do a catch weight, but is it going to be for a title? It would it be obviously a catch weight, but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't see that. It happening. would be huge, even if it was like but an exhibition, like on a Sunday night with the <laughs> true, like you know, they could do a catch weight with no title involved, yeah, um, down the road. But, but I don't I think, think it's I, but like... I, I honestly think that Shevchenko's done with Nunez. She's like, I'm the king of this division, and she's just gonna tear it up for as long as she can. And she has already, I think she's beaten everyone in the top 10. That's where they're trying to get more top 10 contenders yeah, in, yeah, this, yeah, exactly. in this in this division but uh yeah all the fans obviously i want to see nunez shevchenko fight again mm -hmm. i don't think she wants to do it though i don't think i don't see why shevchenko would want to do it yeah no Personally. i agree yeah um so the main event of the evening finally finally we get to see alexander Vol volkanovsky did i say that yeah. okay you versus brian ortega Volkanovski is a minus 180 and Ortega is a plus 140. Those odds might have changed. This is yesterday that I looked at this. Um, so Volkanovski, the champ, this is his second title defense. He won the championship from Max Holloway. Then, then he uh, um, uh, fought Max Holloway again in his first title defense, beat him in a, I want to say a split decision. It was a close fight. It was a split decision. It was a really close fight. Yeah. And so, cause I remember it could have been argued that, that Holloway took it. Um, and cause there was, yeah, there was a, there was some controversy about that. I remember. I remember. And yep. yeah. So now you have Brian Ortega coming in here. Ortega's looked great since he lost to um, Max Holloway and, mm -hmm. you know, coming out, he fought, stopped uh, the Korean zombie and his last fight he won as well. Um, I've been a fan of Brian Ortega's ever since I saw him step into the oct octagon Volkanovski is probably one of the best rounded fighters in the game. The only thing I think that that knocks on him is he's kind of short. But I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, really. But he's yep. got great movement. He stays away from the you know the his opponent's heavy punches. Um, he's got great wrestling, great takedown defense, great striker. He's a great counter puncher. Ortega's you know he's a little bit more. Um, unorthodox i think he's he fights southpaw usually he likes to throw elbows um but he's great at it and uh i mean i don't know this is a tough one to call for me i'm a fan of ortega i'm gonna be going with ortega that's kind of where my heart's at 
I want to see him do it. I think he can do it. Um, he's just got to stay. He's just got to, I don't know. He's got to, obviously he's got to fight better than he did against when he fought Max, Max Holloway. And he's mm-hmm. got to keep, uh, I think Volkanovsky on the outside. I don't know. I don't know if he can finish him, but he might win a, a decision. That's how I started to see Ortega's only way of, of getting this thing done. What do you guys think? Yeah. You know what? I think, uh, I think Volkanovski is like the better striker of the two. Uh, Ortega has got a way better ground game. Um, and I think that will be key if he can, he can, like you said, keep his distance, maybe take him down a little bit. Um, I think he has a chance. His submissions are really good too, Ortega as well. Um, but He's a I great think fighter. He is. Yeah. Great. Well-rounded too. But yeah. I think, you know, like I said, striking wise, uh, if he fights a smart fight, and and keeps his distance like he said i think he has a chance to pull it off the upset but uh i'm gonna be going with uh volkanovsky it's gonna be the last leg of my parlay um i do like ortega as well i just am going to ride with the champ in this one i think his striking will be the distance or the difference um i kind of see it going the distance um i wouldn't i'm probably gonna stay away from that betting wise but uh I'm gonna I'm gonna lock it in. Go with the uh, Volkanovski to uh, defend his title, and uh, maybe set up uh, a Holloway fight next. I don't know. Number what three. Do mm-hmm. uh, maybe I think Holloway is deserving of it. I mean, me too. Yeah. I think that's kind of where the UFC would go um, if he does pull it off. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. So Dan, what do you what do you think about the main event there? Well, I mean, I. I honestly think I would like to see, you know, the underdog. I always like the good underdog story. So I'm going to go with Ortega. He's an exciting fighter. Um, I think it's his time, you know, any, it's not, it's not a huge um, favorite for, uh, or he's not a huge underdog, but um, no, yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm going to go with Ortega. I think, you know, it's going to, it's not going to be a quick fight. It's going to go the distance four or five rounds um and i think he comes up with win nice yeah uh you know i'm not gonna be mad either way on that one i'm actually a holloway fan so i hope regardless he gets a uh he gets a title fight i think like you said mikey's deserving of it and uh if volkanovsky pulls it off i think that is the fight to make because you know like you said it was such a close close fight the last time uh, while we're on it, I'll just uh, go over my quick parlay here that I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing Jessica Andrade, Curtis Blades, and Alexander Volkanovsky. Uh, $100 bet pays out 183 if all three hit. What do you got, Mike? All right, my parlay, I'm not going to do all five because that's just ridiculous. I'm going to do Andrade. <laughs> I'm going to do Nick Diaz and Brian Ortega. That's gonna be my parlay. If I hit, it's gonna pay. I don't know what I. I don't know what it'll pay me yet. That'll be money on it yet. No, no, that'll be that'll be some good odds though. It will be. Yeah. Because we got staying the away from the Shevchenko fight. fight, and I'll probably do a few more bets in there. Uh, just straight up bets for sure. I'm gonna take Ortega to win. I'm gonna take Nick Diaz to win. I'm going to. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, we'll, what did I say? I, I called the, uh, the. I said Andre is gonna gonna finish it. And I said that right. You did. You did. I'm yeah. Take Andre to finish that fight. Or you should. You should also maybe throw in Chochenko by submission, even though I don't know. It's probably a favorite. <laughs> Odds yeah, wise, I'm but, just gonna uh, stay away from that one. There's no money in there, really. No, yeah. Right? I totally agree. Hundred percent. But yeah, the Nick Diaz one. I mean, I'm, that's just who I want to see win. And same with Ortega. That's who I want to see win. It, it can happen. But oh, yeah, sure. Volkanov. Sure. He's. Uh, He's pretty, pretty. I think I'm looking forward to that fight uh, the most, the the main event there. I think Diaz Lawler could be fun, but we just, there's so many unknowns about that one. Um, But Dan, do you have any, uh, any guarantees you want to share? I don't have any guarantees. Shevchenko, but um, yeah, no, I probably won't put any actual physical paper on any of these fights, but I will make a friendly bet with you two guys. And First shots. Um, I will take a parlay. Okay. Robbie Lawler, as well as Ortega, for two shots. Next up. So you got to hit. Got to hit both. And if they don't, you drink two yep. shots. Done. Easy. 
Cool. If one of them wins, if one of them win, then it's only one shot. <laughs> if one of them win, then it's only one shot. If both <laughs> lose, then yeah, it's two shots. <laughs> All right, you gotta, well, get, you gotta give me some uh, some points yeah, cool. here. But that's Saturday night. We're pumped, and we'll see how it goes, how it plays out. All righty, we are back with the dirty talk with Dan Nandez on the West Coast Sports Junkies. Um, some dirty stuff happening just before the NHL gets up and rolling. Vander Kane, uh, for those of you who were seeing the tweets from his uh, his wife for separated um, betting on games, she basically called him out and basically said that he's been betting on the games that he's playing. The NHL has come out and done their investigation, didn't find anything wrong, not accusing him of betting. So at least that's good. Sounds like it's more uh, domestic issues than anything else. Um, But let's just jump straight into fantasy. I know that, you know, in the previous episodes, I've been saying I'm going to switch up the dirty talk a little bit, focus a little bit on fantasy football. Um, For those of us that are in fantasy, we know how exciting it is. It's, you know, the ups and downs of the NFL, if you're in fantasy. And I just want to say, how's the Seahawk attack? I know Mike and his drafting this year in our pool. He went, for those of you that are, you know, big into fantasy, four players from the same team, calls it a full-on Seahawks attack with uh, his quarterback, Russ, uh, Carson at uh, running back, He's got Lockett, who's been playing pretty decent in the first two weeks. Uh, his defense is a Seahawks and kicker. That's a full-on Seahawks attack. I can't wait to hear from Mike on how that went this week. Um, <laughs> and I know Ty, he's had, you know, a couple of uh, tough weeks. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, you know, stumbled out of the gates. He was probably studying for Jeopardy in week one. Uh, didn't know whether he wanted to play. I know Ty is really butthurt about that one. He's come back, though. He did have a decent week this week. And in terms of I know my fantasy, it's all over the place. I just got to say that the Steelers, I said it in our pre-draft episode, do not pick any Steelers. <laughs> Deontay Johnson was up there in the rankings. I just It just fell to me. I took him. He's, he's leading the team on um, receptions, but oh my God, he's made out of glass every single game he's hurt. Last week, he hurt on a meaningless play at the end of the game, hurt his ankle, looked like he was dying on the sideline. They've come out and said no serious injuries. He should be hopefully good to go. But I mean, how much we're already in week two and these are already week to week issues with him. Uh, Big Ben, I mean, pectoral issue throwing arm he's already like 40 something years old has been questioning retiring the last you know three seasons just end it man you're you're beating a dead horse you're not tom you're not going to be getting into the playoffs and you know leading the steel curtain to a super bowl um bah, 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 bah. that's it ladies and gentlemen for the dirty talk with dan nandez can't wait for this week of fantasy we'll get be right back at it next week and I'll let you guys know of what are some of the players you need to start dumping. Well, Dan, uh, you know what? I just need to thank you for not pointing out to everyone uh, that I'm 0-2. Oh, Don't worry, Ty. Two. Don't worry. So am I. <laughs> but, but so I am, uh, you know, it's, it's been pointed out before. I am the defending fantasy champion, okay? Last season... I didn't lose two games the entire year. Okay. We're heading into week three and I've already lost two. I don't know what to do here. Mike, I know you've been in the situation a little bit before. You might have to talk me through this. Dan, (laughs) you had a bad year last year as well. Like I'm just ready to dump my whole team. Uh, You know, I'm open for trades and it's, it's been a tough few weeks, man. Like this week, you know, Dak Prescott is one. Okay. Like he had a, he had a, tough matchup on the road whatever they decided to run the ball but seven points i lost by seven i think he i could have started sam darnold daniel jones Derek carr you name it and i would have crushed and been on the board but you know fantasy is really testing my resolve early in the season and maybe it's because i don't usually deal with these things uh but but mike what do you think like what the hell's going on here 
Well, Ty, you know, just don't worry about it. You know, you'll you'll get through it. You'll be okay. <laughs> I can tell you that. But, uh, you know, Dan said that fantasy is exciting and a lot of fun. I don't really find it all that exciting and all that fun. It's been uh, it's been tough. Although my team, like you said, yeah, I do have a, quite a few Seahawks on my team. I'm very proud of them. They've been playing really well for me, actually. If it wasn't for them, I would have been getting blown out. And uh, Yeah, I they're mean, definitely my, not your issue right now, right? No, my first week, I mean, I should have won my first week. I think I put up like 100 and, I don't know, 15 points or something like that. Monday night football comes around. I'm playing some tight end I never even heard of on the Raiders. <laughs> puts up fucking 22 <laughs> points or whatever. Like I was leading like 15 points going, what the fuck is that? And so that's the luck I have, right? I, you know, if you have a 15-point lead, they got one tight end playing, and it's not like a top five tight end that you, well, can, you know of. Mike, he is considered a top five, but I, I will agree with you. That is a bad beat. And he plays on the Raiders, right? Normally, you're playing yeah. a Raiders player. You're, you're golden. You don't exactly. have to worry about that. And then even this past week, so with the Seahawks shit in the bed there in the second quarter, I still put up 100 points, just under 100 points, like 97 points or whatever. You know, I looked at the uh, who I was playing there, and the first half was I was dominating. I was like, "There's no yeah. keep this up, no problem." Henry's yeah. being shut down, whatever. And Henry goes on to run for 160 something <laughs> yards and three touchdowns. It's like, oh my god, come on, man! Like, what the hell is that? That alone just I think I lost by 40 points, and I think he put up 40 points. So that's fucking stupid. Yeah, man. Fantasy, uh, you know, things definitely go haywire real quick. You think you're having a good week. Luckily, in, in in my leagues, I wasn't playing Aaron Jones. But think of the people playing Monday night against Aaron Jones. Dan was talking about it because he needed a little little something from uh, Devontae Adams, and he was getting mad at the ball hog. Aaron Jones scoring all the touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, spread the ball around, man. <laughs> Jeez. But, Mike, you know, I'm looking at your team here. I'm looking at just some of the stats from last week, and you're right. You got, I mean, unlucky with Derrick Henry, 45 points. Uh, Jackson, Lamar Jackson on Monday night. Like, yeah. who saw that coming? 32 well, points. No, even last but year. You'd want to talk about a ball hog. Like, he's yeah. got running backs. Like, does he got to rush every single play? <laughs> yeah, well, Dan, Dan, he did lose two starting running backs this year, which <laughs> oh, I know yeah, well true. from another league. But, but I think, Mike, story. your biggest trouble, and I think, and you know what, now that I'm looking at it, your Seahawks players are actually your top players. But Barkley, Saquon Barkley is probably your first round pick, and he's junk. Oh, uh, he's, he's, he's questionable. He's got that knee injury there. Yeah, right? He's warming I mean, up this week. This week this is what I'm doing. Okay. You guys can tell me if I'm wrong. I'm taking Barkley out. Cause you're right. He's hasn't done F all, but he can, he can put him up. He's warming up. You know what? I, I'm this taking is Barkley lead. out and I'm putting Singletary in. You might want to rethink that. See how the week goes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he played, you know, he's had some time off here. Uh, he played last Thursday, so he had 10 days to get ready for this next game. And I think you could see him unleashed a little more. I think they're being careful with him. Uh, I think it might be time to give him the rock and unleash the beast. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. you know, just just watch the injury report this week. See how it goes. See how he's progressing before you yeah. make that bold move. I also had Landry in last week. He gets he gets Hurt. He's done, right? Yeah. So... I mean, at least he's on he's on IR now, so at least your decisions are a lot easier week to week when someone's on IR. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but, but Mike, uh, uh, this is my uh, free tip of the day to you: stick with Barkley. They're playing the Falcons, and the Falcons are borderline Jacksonville territory. <laughs> okay, and maybe a <laughs> little bit better than Jacksonville, a slim a smidge better than the Lions, but not much more. <laughs> and they're playing the Falcons. I would start Barkley, and you can thank me next week. All like right. you, all right, Mike. You know what? We're both uh, we're both gonna get our first wins of the season in uh, in one of our leagues this week. Uh, next week we'll have a celebratory shot to uh, lament the 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 win there. So it's gonna be another interesting week in the fantasy football season. And uh, like I said, I hope we get our wins. Good luck to you all in your fantasy matchups this week. And we'll check in next Dirty Talk. Yep. All right, everybody. That is a wrap for this week's episode with West Coast Sports Junkies. It was awesome being back. It was great, Mike, seeing you guys and Ty after your lovely vacations. Um, Govic should be back next week. As always, 
Check us out on our website at www.westcoastsportsjunkies.ca. And we look forward to seeing you all next week.